Yeah. So it's really too bad we can't, you know, like just still plug in our cars that have batteries and, you know, use them off grid as battery storage solutions. I mean, that would be the ultimate talk about way it, of doing it. And uh, just, luckily, actually, it'd just be good if there was a charging system to cut, put the, the power into the cars. <laughs> Joe, did you just ruin our segue? I think you did. <laughs> <laughs> Dang it. Uh, well, good news for oh. those of you wondering about that. Uh, our <laughs> friends over at the uh, the Lucids, it's a company that makes cars. Oh, uh, it also would, oh, I see what you're doing there, Joe. You went a step above and beyond, really. Oh. Wow. Yeah. You, you just weren't quite getting there, and I had to come in and... Yeah. yeah. Well, well this has, I'll just give you the headline wow. here to summarize because I know I'll, I'll forget something. But <laughs> Lucid Air is to be the fastest charging EV featuring a 900 volt plus architecture. I'll explain that in a minute. Delivering a charging rate of up to 20 miles per minute. Wow. So <laughs> they're wow. partnering with Electrify America, no surprise there, for a unlimited three-year, 350 kilowatt fast charging at its nationwide network and Q Merit for its installation of a bi-directional dun, dun, dun. home charging station for mm. car to grid capability. Interesting. Wow. And if That's you recall, cool. this bad boy is gonna have 500 miles of range, which you know is gonna be a lot of little electrons floating around. It's gonna be a <laughs> lot of juice for you to run on. And the irony of that whole thing is, we were just talking about the power wall has 13.5 kilowatt hours, and that's actually considered a decent amount of home backup. That's just for one power wall. Mm -hmm. Like the lowest range Tesla right now has what, like 75. 68 kilowatt hours? Yeah, or 70 or something. Like like a like a tremendous amount, right? You're talking right. like six six Tesla power walls packed in that one little car, uh, or if you have you know a performance model long range, it's a lot. So you know this thing is going to have. <laughs> probably over well over like 120 kilowatt hours in it which is a tremendous amount you could run your house for a long for, period of time on that week. if you could just yeah. plug it in and apparently that that's the deal so there were some kind of bullet points here uh dc fast charging up to 20 miles per minute peak charging rate of 300 kilowatts so this would be i believe the fastest i've not seen uh the fastest currently announced the porsche taycan taycan says it'll do 350 at an 800 volt architecture. I personally tested that in the best possible case with Porsche and it did not get above 250, maybe 251 or 252. So this this I believe would would be the fastest if they can truly do it. It has this 900 volt electrical architecture. This is really interesting. Um I don't fully understand the the implication. There's like a lot of things that this means, but when you look at a at a Tesla uh, supercharger, you're talking 400 volts. The uh, the Electrify America ones is at 800 volts. So this is 900. Mm. And I I think it actually poses challenge. Like this isn't a thing where more just means better. <laughs> um, Lucid did actually answer. I said I asked a question about that because in the Taycan, for example, it has to step up from a 400 to an 800 volt architecture and that actually means even at a dc fast charger that isn't the electrify america one it can only get something like 50 or 75 kilowatts so it's actually like worse if that makes sense huh. um, because it has to do this step up it loses a lot of that power wow. so you know the charger may say yeah we're going at 200 kilowatts but because you have to step it up you're only going to get like 80 of it or something like that so that sucks uh here they're saying um, I don't know if you guys can see my email or not, but they're saying that uh, they have a thing called the the Wunderbox. Wunderbox. I don't know why I just want to say that like, with a crappy <laughs> German in, in, impression, but uh, <laughs> this will boost the voltage if it's needed. And this is this is a direct quote from the Lucid PR team. Um, they I asked the question just to be clear: Does the nine hold of does the nine hundred volt architecture require stepping up the charge similar to the Taycan? in order for it to get the full speed, or is that all built in? And he said the Wonderbox, in quotes, I don't. that's like a piece of tech that they're doing here, um, boosts the voltage in cases as needed, meaning that 
the DC charging station does not need to be 900 volts in order for us to charge at a higher rate as the wonder box will automatically boost the voltage where appropriate. Uh, more mm. info possibly to follow on our wonder box from, from our wonder box lead. So whoever's doing that. Um, so to me, that's good news because when I actually first saw this, I thought 900 volt architecture, it's not just more is better in this case because it's almost like having an 8k TV when there's zero 8k footage. It's right. like, it kind of <laughs> makes 4k footage look like crap. It's the same kind of thing where yeah. like, if you go to a charger, that's not 900 volt, it actually makes it worse. So hmm. wonder box to the answer. We'll see. <laughs> cool. I was going to see it as, as future proofing possibly. Yeah. Um, like putting 5g I mean, in a cell phone when there's no 5g towers type of thing. Right. Yeah, but I mean, like we're seeing the uh, the electrical charging stations. We're we're seeing them get stronger and stronger and faster and more powerful. And they're just kind of saying, like, hey, when it gets stronger, we'll be the only ones that can handle it. Mm -hmm. Maybe. Right. Yeah. It, it. It's trying to get ahead of the curve a little bit. The question is, is that a good strategy? Like, like maybe. Hopefully, they've been talking with their charging partners, Electrify America. That yeah, that's the right way to go. Um, you know, but who knows a battery day Tesla could come out and be like, yeah, you know, 15,000 volt architecture or something, you know, whatever. Like, so mm -hmm. it could be a thing where there's kind of a, a leap forward. Um, anyways, so also it includes a 19.2 kilowatt AC onboard charger, which is crazy. Uh, is that, that means that, what yeah, Tesla what's that? Has? That's about double what Tesla's onboard charger is. Correct. And so at home, uh, you could, uh, once you install the, appropriate hardware to support this yeah uh you can get up to 80 miles of charge of range per hour uh, just from home so that's that's tremendous yeah that's about double I don't, what yeah i don't yeah. know that you need that really but cool i guess like if yeah. you're ubering or something like you can go home and just bam like get a ton of range real quick uh otherwise you know you just plug in it at, at, at night and it's fine yeah it that's takes, the whole thing you really don't need crazy fast at home because you're yeah it's charging yeah. while you're sleeping normally yeah and but maybe to joe's point this is future proofing yep so that's cool um it has this thing to to boost the charging uh from level one and level two to level three i'm not quite sure what this means um to me they're saying that it has a ccs connector which is great because that means that that's what everyone else supports and i think there's even a retrofit for teslas that can get ccs uh, but there's also adapters and things. So you don't really need that. Anyways, uh, last bit. First, bi -direct, full bi-directional directionality for advanced vehicle to everything, V to X. I actually like this <laughs> term. That's cool. Uh, capabilities built in for future enablement of vehicle to grid and vehicle to vehicle features. Vehicle to vehicle. Future. 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 Okay. And so I asked <laughs> Lucid, will the uh, V to X require additional hardware? such as a gateway and a sub panel. So the idea, just to recap real briefly, is that like we were just talking about having a power wall as your backup, you could just have your car plugged in as your backup. And I don't mm -hmm. know if that means you could do the whole arbitrage thing or if it means just in like, you know, the power goes out, you're, you can run off your car. Uh, but, you know, we'll see. And so with your power wall and stuff, there's actually a lot of additional hardware. You don't just like come, you know, set this box next to your house and plug it in. There's a lot of other stuff that has to be installed in order for it to function properly. Um, and so so that's what I asked them. I, I, I asked them, will the V2X require additional hardware, such as a gateway or sub panel, or will it work somehow without those things? Um, also, how long from delivery until a customer could reasonably estimate for this feature to be available? So their response was, yes, there are additional components that will need to be installed along with the station in order to, to support the vehicle to grid capabilities. These include an automatic transfer switch, grid disconnect to tell the car and station when there is a not grid power available and a gateway to communicate with uh, to communicate this with the charging station and other residential energy products such as ESS or solar so uh, and solar mm -hmm. so the idea there being that um, it will be available very early on and there is additional hardware which of course you would need uh, and in the end though, that, or this is I, the first, I think real company that's saying that they will have this, you know, Tesla's teased it for years. I believe the original model S and X had it or well, not even the, the X, leaf maybe. has it. What's it? Don't, don't, the, doesn't the leaf have vehicle to vehicle and vehicle right. to grid? 
Right, but I don't know if they ever rolled it out. Yeah, I, uh, I, yeah. Mm. So, anyways, a lot of companies have talked about this for a while. I, maybe Nissan has. Maybe I'm wrong about that. But uh, the fact that it's bi-directional is that's massive, and that's super smart. I think that's definitely the way to go. If Tesla could flip that on, like there were some rumors about that, then that would literally change the entire electrical grid in the country overnight. Yeah. If, if they could just do that again, you'd have to install hardware to enable it. There's a lot more to it than just like. I plugged it in. Woohoo, now it works. Like, no, no, no. Like, there's so much more that you would have to do. But the fact that you could do it means that they, Tesla, could become a util like an energy provider, like a grid supplier mm -hmm. overnight. And you, as in Tesla owner, with this capability, could even be earning money by selling energy from your car back to the grid. It's crazy what, what would be possible if they could do that. And what if Tesla could sell you a, you know, a connector thing that puts it back into the grid or whatever it needs to do uh, for the utility company? And what if they could even take a small percentage as like, a, hey, we hooked this up for you or something, you know, or something. That's what they do. Yeah. And currently and they have a they system called Connected Solutions. Making money. Um, and that's the v v uh, virtual power plant thing that I was talking about. And that thing, um, I well, I believe how that's how it works because the, if when you... So for people that are part of this in, uh, I don't think this is how it works in Vermont, but in Massachusetts and Rhode Island, and it might be Connecticut, I forget. But if you go to the Tesla Connected Solutions page, you'll, you'll see all the d details of it. The way it works is Tesla is negotiating contracts with the utility providers, uh, with, I'm sorry, what you'd call a grid operator to be an energy supplier. And the, and the source of that energy is our power walls. And so they kind of act as the middleman, which, which as from the grid operator standpoint is like, hey, you're going to give me more reliable, cheaper energy. Let's party, bro. Like, mm -hmm. yes, let's do that. And then you as a Tesla Powerwall owner, they will reach out to you and say, hey, do you want to enroll in this? And if so, uh, you know, you just have to be available to participate in these events. Like right now in California, if we had it, this would definitely be an event like the grid needs more energy. And then in the, in the, in the end, you as the supplier of energy, you as the Powerwall owner, get a physical check, get real money for doing this. Mm -hmm. So imagine if every single person that owns a Tesla car could do this. That yeah. would be an absolute game changer for the grid. I mean, Tesla's value and and like revenue would just skyrocket. It would be nuts. Their stock would go even higher than it is already. However, that's possible. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> Hey guys, thanks so much for watching this clip from our show. If that's just not enough for you and you want to watch the full episode, you can go to olfpod.com slash YT. And if you want more from us, you can consider becoming a Patreon member. You'll get early access to episodes. You can join our awesome community. You can actually watch us record live and get your name in the credits by going to olfpod.com slash Patreon. So thanks everyone for watching. Check back every Friday for new clips here and new episodes on the main channel. Thanks, everybody.